Well, you got all the planter stuff ready to go. Yeah, I think she's ready to plant now, huh? <laughs> no, I'm... she's at least greased. I don't know if she'll throw seeds in the ground, but. Oh, well, I was hoping you already have the tractor hydraulic problems and the planter elliptical problems already have that fixed by the time I got back with my oh, endless yeah. wiring harness. Oh yeah, it was it was an easy fix. She just she just fixed it. Yeah, uh, well, we was already a, a week behind everybody else on planting. My plan was was start planting yesterday, and then just problem after problem after problem. We thought we had our planter ready to go when we pulled it out of the shop. You know, we hooked the monitor and everything up. Everything's checking out fine. Hooked it up again, uh, testing everything out. Lost communication on uh, one of my seed tubes on number 10. Went and got a wiring harness. After I changed seed tubes from side to side to verify it wasn't, uh, uh, it wasn't a bad, bad seed tube, the problem didn't move. So next step was wiring harness. That didn't fix it. Now I come to find out it's the SRM on there. Also, while this thing was just sitting here idling, I was testing out the hydraulics, started screaming out a hydraulic code for the steering. Hooked my computer up, no error codes, but apparently I guess like hydraulic pressures and stuff don't show up on the laptop. So I got a tech out coming out for that tomorrow, hopefully. Sprayer is good to go. I think that's the only blasted thing that's working right now. And then our water truck here, filled it up with water and heard a hissing coming from the rear end. And we got an airbag about to explode. I don't know when we're planting. It ain't gonna be today. Good chance it won't be tomorrow. And then we got freezing cold temperatures coming in this weekend with lows on two nights of about 37, 38 degrees. Yeah. So that's where we're at right now. All right, quick recap on everything that's happened. All right, we've had two and a half weeks, beautiful weather. Could have been, should have been planting, but we've been really dragging our feet because of problem number one, not being able to get our chicken litter spread. We got uh, close to 400 tons already hauled out here. The guy that I had been contracting with the last 10 plus years always done me a great job. Just uh, he always kind of him and hauled around, never would give me a definitive answer. He's been telling me for the last year or so that he might be getting out, but he's never come out and told me, hey, I can't spread your litter. So I just assumed that he'd be able to come through and get my litter spread this year. Well, finally, uh, there, uh, middle of, middle part of March or so, I came to the realization that uh, he's not going to spread my litter. So scrambled around. Everybody else, because of the extremely wet winter, has been uh, extremely backed up. Hard to find anybody else, but finally found another guy uh, that called me. He said, yep, I'll get your litter spread, no problem, about 10 days out. Anyway, had 10 good drying days. Uh, called him to see where he's at. Said he's about uh, uh, three or four more days out. Uh, wait another three or four more days. Uh, called him up. Uh, he wouldn't answer like for three days in a row. Finally got him on the on the fourth day. Said, yeah, I got like 375 more tons of litter to spread. Uh, should be able to get there this last, this, this, this last weekend. Like, fine, I'll holler at you when I get out of church to show you the fields. He said, no problem. Anyway, got out of church, sent him a text, never uh, never answered it. Uh, tried calling him uh, later that afternoon, three times, never answered. Tried calling him Monday morning, never answered. Tried calling him Monday afternoon, never answered. And so I saw a pattern quickly developing to where he just wouldn't answer my phone calls. Uh, that weekend wasn't the first time. So finally realized he's just ghosting me. He's feeding me a line of bull, was not gonna be able to get my chicken litter spread. Uh, got on Facebook, finally found a guy in North Alabama said he's going to come up here and do it. So he's going to be here late, later this week. So, so problem number one solved. So I decided in the meantime, well, I'm going to go plant soybeans. We got about a day and a half worth of soybeans to plant. Already had litter spread on it last fall. Go ahead and knock that out. 
and then after this cold snap that's coming up then we'll switch to corn so anyway all of this was monday morning uh my plan was gonna hook up to the planter fill up with beans start planting beans monday afternoon anyway my other tractor over here under the shed the one i'd been using for all my dirt work cranked it up heard noise coming from the alternator bearing going out in the alternator all right change that out uh, our suspension on both of our tractors had not been working good, so decided I'm uh, going to take the accumulators off, have them check, checked out and charged up if possible. They were both low, got that done. In the process, Andy took uh, the one off his tractor off, took it off perfectly. When I took mine off my tractor, I took a hydraulic oil bath Monday morning. Great way to start out the week. I highly recommend it for anybody. So there was two other problems solved. Uh, where are we at now? Uh... After that, I got that stuff done, hooked up to the planter, started testing everything out, leaving it up and everything, swapped all the meters over because we had the corn meters in there because normally I plant corn first. Well, not this time. We're planting uh, soybeans first, so I had to change over all the meters and then getting it all set up, testing out correctly. Uh, one, of the, uh, one of the seed tube sensors was not reading. Now, keep in mind, y'all saw us going through the planter and everything back in February when we hooked everything up, tested out, everything was picture perfect. All I needed to do was hook it up, grease it, put seed in it, and go to the field. Sometime in the last two months, that seed tube, I thought, decided to go bad. Swap seed tubes from uh, one row to the next, see if the problem moved from row to row. It did not. It stayed with the original row, so then that led me to believe, well, the wiring harness on that one row unit is bad. Found one uh, almost an hour north. Went and picked it up, put it on there. Did it fix the problem? No, it did not fix the problem. So I spent all of yesterday afternoon trying to track down problems. Finally tracked it down. It was a bad SRM. Got that put on there this morning. Uh, also yesterday, our water truck, we got chemicals put on there and everything and took it, uh, took it down here, going to load it up with water and got a load of water on there and started hearing a bad, real bad hissing from the airbag. Yes, the airbag dry rotted and was about to explode. Pulled it in here. Uh, nobody had them in stock, but we were able to get some airbags here about lunch. That's currently what Andy's working on. And then also yesterday was his problem number five, six, ten. I don't know. While we were messing around with the planter trying to diagnose it with the tractor running, all of a sudden we had a alarm start screaming at us for... Uh, problems with the power steering hydraulic pressure now if you remember from last year we had a bunch of uh, hydraulic pump issues with that tractor we thought we got them rectified even though the hydraulics never was quite right there was a uh, had some alarms for oil overheating and i did, it wasn't right but it was planting it got the job done but it's only doing it so intermittently that it's really almost impossible to diagnose which seems to be the case of most of our problems they're kind of intermittent instead of just being being permanent Anyway, scrambled around, had to call several different stores, finally found a tech that could come out here today because no codes were showing up on my New Holland EST uh, computer program to be able to diagnose it. Got out here this morning and he found a sensor on top of the transmission attached to the hydraulics that the top of it had like kind of exploded or something. Most likely that was a problem. Anyway, scrambled around, finally found... Uh, Finally found another sensor. Had to drive all the way to Missouri to get it, but we do have a sensor now. And uh, hopefully he'll be back out here pretty soon. He had some other jobs to go do while I went and got the part. Hopefully he'll be back out here soon and uh, get that sensor put on. But also in the meantime, I was uh, talking with him about some other minor issues, aggravating issues we've had with this tractor. If you remember from two planting seasons ago, I thought the transmission was going out because it was shifting real hard, jerking real bad in between ranges. I sent it off. Uh, they didn't find anything wrong with the transmission except the software was bad out of date, updated the software, seemed to improve it some, but it did not get rid of the problems. Well, anyway, while I was researching the suspension problem, I came across a, a thread from, uh, from the United Kingdom, where New Hollands are real popular over there, talking about transmissions. And come to find out there is an accumulator, which is a basically a gas-filled shock on the transmission that helps smooth out the jerkiness between shifting and aids in shifting. Uh, where when he comes back out here, he's gonna bring the equipment to check the pressure in the accumulator, which might actually solve that problem. Oh, and one other problem I forgot to tell you about while Andy was using this tractor to spread fertilizer. 
out of the hydraulic tank breather was bubbling oil occasionally. I have no idea how that was doing it because the, the level in the tank is way below the breather. But, you know, after having all these issues, kind of makes me think that they're possibly related. So I told the tech when he's out here to check the filters on there because when we were servicing these tractors, there's always been uh, confusion about what hydraulic filters go on this tractor. It's got three different ones and changing part numbers get changed every single year. And for this model tractor, they list like four or five different part numbers depending on, I guess, depending on serial number or whatever. So I wasn't even sure if we put the right hydraulic filter on there, but it fit in the housing and everything else. I thought it was, I thought it was fine. Well, come to find out we had two of the three filters right and one of them is wrong which might have been the source of all this problem might have caused too much uh, pressure in there or back pressure or something which blew the top of the sensor off could also be causing it to bubble up out of the uh, uh, hydraulic breather uh, probably not the transmission problems but i don't know anyway he's gonna be bringing a correct filter out here so hopefully all these nagging problems on the tractor will be solved and also the hard shifting is starting to show up in our other tractor too. So uh, I'm thinking of these accumulators on these New Holland tractors, at least for the suspension, don't last very long. Maybe the ones for the transmission don't either. And that's all it is. Just need to replace or recharge the accumulator. Was that, was that confusing enough for you? Because it's still confusing in my head and I, and I lived it. <laughs> that sounds like a uh, fun time. It sure has been. Did I leave anything out, Andy, or did I, I cover it? Did I pretty much cover everything? Ah, uh, um, did you get the airline in the seat you busted? Oh yeah, yeah. The uh, the the seat in that tractor uh, would not hold air. Uh, tracked down the airline, found a hole, spliced it together. Guess what? It's still leaking out air. It would only stay up for like two minutes, then it'd be flat on the ground. Finally found the switch. It was leaking out a little bit of air around the switch. Couldn't hear it, but it was leaking it out enough to make it go flat. Anyway, got that fixed yesterday afternoon and uh, it was still up this morning. Keep our fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Our airbags are almost in, so. Andy's about got our, got our airbags in. Uh, we got, since one of them was dry rod about to blow, we're gonna wind up replacing all four, so. It's a little pricey, but it's probably worth it. Yeah, three hundred fifty dollars a piece for those airbags. <laughs> so anyway, I was hoping this was gonna be a planting video, but I looks like I've had an eleven minute monologue here, so I'm not gonna leave a whole lot of time for planting. But I do hope to get some planting mm -hmm. in this video, as long as that sensor solves our problems and the mechanic can get out here. We're gonna get some soybeans in the ground. Uh, like I said, the, the weather this uh, coming up weekend got a massive cold front coming through. We're supposed to have like three days in a row with lows in the upper 30s. Uh, soybeans tend to handle cold weather a little bit better than, uh, than corn does. So with the uh, hot temperatures we got now, I think the soil will be warm enough. It'll withstand the cool, it'll, it'll withstand the, the cool temps for a few days and hopefully our beans will be fine. So anyway, that's it for now. Give you an update when things straighten out a little. Better late than never. Let's get the field. meters primed everything is checking out on the planter should we risk it we're gonna risk it we're gonna try to put some put some of this soybean in the ground hopefully hopefully all the kinks are worked out and uh we only have to do minimal adjusting on the planter and she's doing a good job so we're gonna go around on over here to my starting point and a little late today to be starting but hey better late than never all right, everything set up. All right, let's try her out. Up, oh, low 
load sensor on it. I knew I had a load sensor out. I didn't know, didn't know which one it was on. But still, uh, everything else looking good. Looking real good. All right, we'll get out, check our depth, and we'll change that load cell on number 23 too. All right, here's a, one, of, one of our front units. Last thing we planted last year was soybeans and we were sitting, sinking them pretty deep because of the really dry soils and I haven't changed any settings. There's one, that's a little shallower than I thought it would be. Uh, there, there's another one. Inch deep, maybe just a hair over, right where I want it. A little bit harder to find the seed trench on these uh, where we had the furrow for us. It does a heck of a job on crumbling that sidewall up, especially. I mean, this soil is in perfect condition, perfect moisture. The best plant conditions I probably ever had in April. Where's that seed trench at? Oh, look at all this clover. Oh, volunteer clover. Oh, there's one. I just knocked it out of place. So what happens when you can't find the seed trench? There's a downside to furrow force. Makes it harder to check seed depth. Cause it does such a good job. I was almost excited as watching Andy uh, unscrew broken bolts with a chisel. That, that right there it is. There's one undisturbed. Like the <laughs> yeah, that's about an inch and a quarter right there. Maybe an inch and a half. Maybe a little deeper than what I want. Check another one over here. Yeah, he's about an inch and a half. We'll have to shallow them up a notch, probably. I'd say my front ones are right about where I need them. The back ones need to be shallowed up about a notch. I see why the load cell wasn't responding. The depth was all the way down. It ain't never gonna respond if that happens. So let's put it back up where it's supposed to be and try it again. We might not have to change that load cell. All right, we didn't get any faults that time on that load cell, so uh, load cell's good. We don't have to change it out. It's just the depth stop was all the way at the bottom, and I mean, it wasn't registering because, registering because it couldn't force it all the way to the bottom. So everything, all the systems look good on the planter, I think. Now we're just gonna do a final check on our depth. So those rows down through here, this outside row looks way better. Yeah, everything's looking good on the monitor. It dug one up, and it was about, a, about an inch deep, about an inch and a half deep. Yep, right at an inch on there. Right there's one. Just a hair over an inch. I think everything is set. Now we need to calibrate the RTK and uh, I think I can roll on. All right, I should have done this before I even started. Forgot about it, but got to calibrate our RTK. All right, we're gonna look at that cross track area. It's right there as close as it can get that we're gonna stop. And then Andy's gonna place a flag directly up under the center of the draw bar where the pin is. All right, I'm gonna drive forward, turn around and come back and then stop me when the flag is directly up under the draw bar and we can measure how far over that flag is. All right, now we're gonna turn back around and get lined right back up over the flag and see how many inches we're off of the center line and that will calibrate the roll on the RTK so it knows how much it needs to compensate whenever we get on the hillside. Looks like it's pretty close to dead on. Where's your where's tape measure at? Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're gonna need tape measure. All right, measure how many inches off it is from the center of that pen. Five. All right, so the flag is five inches to the right of the pen. Yeah. All right. All right, the flag is offset to the right. Offset to the right, five inches. All right, pull that flag up. I'm going to turn around and we're going to do it again. Just see, uh, make sure it's dead on. All right. Like an inch and a half too far this way. All right, so it's offset to the left an inch and a half. That's correct. 
Okay, well, I mean, the RTK is good for one inch, so we're right there, sub in, right there with sub inch accuracy, so. And it looks pretty, pretty dead on to nine inch, so. All right, well, uh. Are ready to start I think so. I'm going to try and get this whole bottom done uh, done tonight. Uh, Jim Kelly, head on back. Uh, work on that seat tender, see if you can get, get, that, get that gas change. And then tomorrow morning, we'll get started. Y'all, uh, get y'all spraying behind me here. Sounds like a plan. All right. Uh, have, have a blast. All right. But everything is set. At least good enough for soybeans. Let's get over here and pick up where we left off. Uh oh. Can't plant without vacuum and hydraulics. Alright, here we go. 2023 crop, we finally started on it. I ain't gonna lie. It's been a rough three days. And I have my doubts we get anything planted this week at all. Satan was working hard on me. He's working hard on all of us. I can be known as 6.38 p.m. on uh, Wednesday, April 19th. We're putting seed in the ground. Finally, finally, finally. And we are planting into perhaps the best conditions in April that I can remember seeing in a long time. And you might ask, why are you planting soybeans first instead of corn? Well, we got four reasons. Number one, my chicken litter hasn't been spread yet, so we're trying to buy a little bit more time to have somebody ch spread the chicken litter. Number two, my full season beans are going to be in bottom ground, ground that is generally too wet to plant wheat on. Right now, we got perfect conditions in these bottoms. Not wet or anything. Uh, the muddy, the, the wet spots are dried up enough to plant and get a stand. Once, once that storm system moves through tomorrow night and Friday, I don't know when they're going to be dried up again. So I want to get these bottoms planted, give them a good chance to come up to a perfect stand. Number three. We got a really serious cold snap coming up with this storm system coming through. We're going to see at least three nights with lows in the mid to upper 30s. It's going to be cold. From prior experience, soybeans will tolerate cold, wet ground better than corn will, with a better chance of coming up to a stand. You know, the conditions the next few days are going to be iffy after this storm system comes through. And I think we're going to stand a less chance of having to replant the soybeans than what we would corn. And number four, I really want some high yielding beans. The only way to get high yielding beans, or, or the most reliable way to get high yielding beans, is get them planted early, timing them up with uh, summer solstice, the longest day of the year. The maturity we're planting is a 4.7, 4.8 maturity. And uh, well, by planting them right now, right around the third week of April, they will start blooming, start setting pods about a week before the longest day of the year. The number one key factor on high yields on soybeans is sunlight. Well, we don't know how much rain we're going to get. We don't know when we're going to get cloudy weather. We don't know what kind of temperatures we're going to get when a drought might come in, when we, when we might go get a hot spell during the summer. We don't know any of that. But we do know when we're going to get the most maximum potential sunlight, and that's going to be on June 21st. We want to make the most of those long summer days, so we want to time up having the soybeans going into reproductive mode when they, when they got the maximum amount of sunlight. After June 21st, Every day that goes by, you get a little bit shorter, going to be less potential sunlight available. And soybeans need sunlight, maximum sunlight to set big yields. So, will our corn suffer a little bit in yield potentially by planting our soybeans first? There's a chance, a small chance, but I think that we stand to make up more yield in soybeans by getting them planted five to six days earlier 
then we will lose by delaying our corn by a couple of days. Because we're only going to have 150 acres of full season soybeans. I can get that planted in a day, day and a half. We're going to have close to 500 acres of corn. You know, it's going to take me four and a half to five days. So if the cold, if the rain and the cold front wasn't going to come through, you know, we could get our beans planted day and a half then switch right over to corn. Our corn would only be a couple days later at post. So all of that is the reasoning why we're planting beans first. My, my, my highest yielding beans have always been April planted beans. And if we didn't go ahead and plant our beans now, uh, we're not going to have April planted beans most likely. So we got some really stout bottoms, good water holding capacity, and we want to get these beans planted early to give them the maximum potential yield that we can. I tell you what, when I was driving up to Missouri to get that sensor, I mean, I just, I was shaking the whole way because I saw probably six or seven planters in the field. It looked like probably 60% of the fields on the way up there had been planted. And here I was, I still hadn't put my first seed in the ground and I was broke down and I didn't know if, we, if or when we were going to be up and running. I tell you what, I was, you know, I didn't video all the troubles that we had this week, mainly because by the time y'all are seeing this video, I had so many other videos recorded that it's too late and I was wanting to try and catch up. But it also wouldn't have made for a good video because I was not, I was not a happy camper. I, I was just, I was just so upset by the fact that we worked so hard all winter to dot all of our I's and cross all of our T's, make sure everything is ready to go or as possibly prepared as we can be so that when it's go time, we can go. And then all of that stuff went wrong right there at the same time. I, did, I don't handle those kinds of situations very well at all. But I will give a shout out to H&R Brownsville and the technician they sent out, uh, they were the only one that could get a technician out in a reasonable amount of time because, I mean, face it, the springtime, the techs at all these dealerships, I mean, they're going 90 to nothing all across the countryside. Everybody's going, everybody needs to run, everybody wants service right then, right there. We we'll give a shout out to H&R Brownsville. They got a tech out there. They got a competent tech out there. He was able to get my problem diagnosed, worked with me to find uh, that part that their, dealer, that their dealership network did not have. And then once I got the part, came back out to take care of, of the issues that I had. And it got me back up and running today. Uh, huge thanks to h &R Brown. Man, y'all, 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 y'all out did yourselves. All right, everything still looking picture perfect. Need a little bit more down pressure there than what we normally do just because the soils are typically are a lot drier than what they typically are plus we got a pretty light seed load in each hopper i've only got 80 pounds of seed in each hopper because uh, this field i'm gonna put my pioneer test plots in and my goal for today is that i'm going to get this field done all except for the few acres that i need for the pioneer test plots and i want to be uh uh, almost completely out of seed by the time I get this done so we don't have to uh, you know do very much vacuuming out in the morning all right guys I know this video mainly consisted of a couple of uh, long monologues uh, but that's going to be enough for this video I'll pick up the rest of uh, soybean planting here in uh, in the next one so uh, I really appreciate y'all watching Y'all stay tuned for some more soybean planting action here in about three days.